On a late September night in 1885, inside of a small resort in Bournemouth, England, a man by the name of Robert Louis Stevenson was having a nightmare. His wife, Fanny Stevenson, woke him up after he'd started screaming in his sleep. Upon being woken up, Robert remarked, Why did you wake me? I was dreaming a fine bogey tale. Robert Louis Stevenson was no regular man. He was an author, and a damn good one at that. In 1883, a novel of his by the name of Treasure Island was published, and was his first major success. However, on that late September night in 1885, Mr. Stevenson's nightmare was his primary influence for his most recognizable novel, Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Published in 1886, the novel deals with a lawyer named John Utterson and a string of murders committed by Edward Hyde, who seems to be connected to John Utterson through a mutual friend of theirs named Dr. Henry Jekyll. Now, before we move on, it's important to note that in this novel, John Utterson and the rest of the world don't know, like we do, that Henry Jekyll and Edward Hyde are the same person. It is also implied in the novel that Henry Jekyll is a homosexual, and Jekyll is just his way of dealing with his homosexuality. With that in mind, we must now fast forward over 100 years into the future to the year 1988. Toho, the company responsible for Godzilla, was looking to release their first game for Nintendo's Famicom. For whatever idiotic reason, they decided to not have Godzilla, Monster of Monsters, be their first release on the console. Instead, what they did was release another monster upon the world, eight months prior to Godzilla's first adventure on the Famicom. This monster I speak of is called Jekyll Hakase no Homa Gatoki, Dr. Jekyll's Hour of the Walking Monstrosity. <laughs> Before we move on again, there's another thing to note. You see this text at the bottom? This translates to, based on Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Please remember that. So, because you as an audience are already privy to how terrible this game is, it should come of no surprise that this game, reportedly, wasn't too successful in Japan. Instead of just releasing Godzilla Monster of Monsters in December of 1988 and forgetting this Dr. Jekyll horseshit ever happened, Toho and Bondi decided that it would be a great idea to take this unsuccessful game and release it in America. However, this wasn't your run-of-the-mill port. It took these people an entire fucking year to localize the game and release it in the States, now retitled as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The game didn't go completely under the radar, it was even mentioned in Nintendo Power Issue 3. Of course, they have no opinion on the game, because I highly doubt they played it at the time, but it's there, horrible art included. Now, the time has come for us to actually delve into this garbage, so without further ado, here is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You hear that music? That god-awful music? It's sort of a commonly known fact at this point that this title music is ripped from Riger. The reason being that they're both produced by the same composer, Michiharu Hasuya. He also helped compose music for another game, that being Super Godzilla for the SNES, which was also published by Toho. I'm not going to judge Mr. Hasuya for blatantly ripping his own music, probably out of laziness, only because I understand why no one could possibly give a fuck about this game. You start out in your house. And once you get into the street, everyone on it is trying to assassinate you. There are kids with slingshots, insane women running into you, dogs trying to hide up your asshole, cats that won't shut the hell up, spiders that can't make up their minds, birds dropping turds from the sky, and one crazy motherfucker who drops bombs on the ground and succeeds in killing you about 99% of the time. 
This is not helped by the fact that good old Dr. Jekyll walks at the speed you would expect someone to be walking if they had multiple test tubes in their ass. He also jumps like he's frantically trying to get them out. Without context, all these enemies sound pretty weird, don't they? Well, with context, it's even worse. Allow me to attempt and explain the plot of this game. Dr. Jekyll is getting married to Miss Millicent on the day of the game, so he must go from his house to the church where he needs to be to marry her. With all this said, there's so many problems with this game, not just in the gameplay, which we'll get to in a couple hours, I hope, but just in the sheer logic that this bullshit tries to present upon the gamer. Where do I even begin? First off, it tells us in the manual that Dr. Jekyll's only goal is to get to the church on time. If this were truly the case, why the fuck is he walking so slow? And why is he walking at all? You'd think he'd get maybe a horse in a carriage? Anything but walking all the way to the church? No. He prefers walking. Which brings me to my next point. Who the fuck are all these people trying to kill him? <clears throat> Let me read from the manual. There's Billy Pones, the little kid with the slingshot, Murphy the dog, Luna the cat, Rachel, Rosette Ranwright, and my personal favorite, the Bomb Maniac. His description here is clear as day, but I still can't help but wonder, who the fuck is the Bomb Maniac? A mysterious man who pops up everywhere to create explosions. He is very dangerous. Why would anyone move to a place where a mysterious man randomly pops up and drops bombs to explode things? You know, maybe, just maybe, I'm asking for too much. But here's another very valid question. Why the hell are all these people trying to kill Dr. Jekyll? You remember how I said that in the original novel, John Utterson, the person investigating Mr. Hyde, has no idea that he's really Jekyll? Well, no one else in the book does either until Jekyll reveals it himself, and he only does two to two people. So why would the people in the game know who Jekyll is? And furthermore, Mr. Hyde brutally murders people in the novel. Don't you think that the police would have done something about this and not let the people of this community turn into vigilantes? There may be another explanation. I also mentioned that in the book, Dr. Jekyll is implied to be homosexual. It's possible that these people are attacking him because he's gay. But if these people know he's gay, why wouldn't Miss Millicent, his bride, know? And if she did, why would she marry him? And why would he be trying to marry her? Uh, none of this makes any fucking sense whatsoever. And this is just on the Dr. Jekyll part. When you die in the game as Dr. Jekyll, you return as Mr. Hyde as he finds himself trapped in the world of demons. Demons are sent to kill him and he has to beat them. One must simply assume that Mr. Hyde is a demon himself, and he is far stronger than the demons sent to kill him. Which poses the question, why would anyone send demons to kill Hyde when he is the perfect demon to have in this world because he is so strong? Not to mention, this paints Mr. Hyde as a good guy. He is trying to save himself from being killed by other demons. But it's explained in the game manual that if Mr. Hyde overcomes where Dr. Jekyll died, evil overcomes good, and they are both killed by lightning from the sky. To understand this better, I think it's time we take a look at the gameplay side of this. You start out in the game trying to reach the church, so naturally it's a side-scrolling game where you must get to the end of the level without being killed. This is hard enough without everyone trying to kill you and Dr. Jekyll walking at the pace of a slug. This is your life meter. If it gets depleted enough, you die. Game over. This is your stress meter. If this gets depleted, you turn into Mr. Hyde. Now, here's the demon world where Mr. Hyde's part of the game becomes relevant. You start out on the end of the map and must kill enough demons to replenish your stress meter so you can turn back into Dr. Jekyll. If you make it to the spot on the map where Dr. Jekyll turned into Mr. Hyde, Mr. Hyde is struck by lightning and killed.
This is all because evil cannot overcome good. If Mr. Hyde makes it past the place where Dr. Jekyll died, good has been overcome by evil and the powers that be don't like this and kill Jekyll. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde also has a completely idiotic coin system. You pick up coins and they literally serve no other purpose but to pass an enemy who sings horribly. You have to pay her to stop singing. This is all because Dr. Jekyll has no attack in the game. You must go through the level simply avoiding all obstacles with no means of defense whatsoever. You have this cane attack, which only serves two purposes. Number one, you can kill a bee and replenish your stress meter. Number two, if you hit that lady who sings with your cane, you automatically turn into Mr. Hyde. What the fuck? Let me get this straight. If I kill a bee, my stress is reduced. But if I hit an annoying lady with my cane, my stress goes through the roof? How does any of this make any sense? Do you know how hard it would be to hit a bee with a cane? Versus how easy it would be to hit a human with a cane? When you turn into Mr. Hyde, you can actually defend yourself. You can punch enemies and you can also use the... Psycho Wave. The Psycho Wave is fucking bullshit. Hey there folks, I'm playing Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde on the NES. I am now going to try and demonstrate how shit the Psycho Wave is. Uh, fair warning, I'm pretty pissed off at this game, and uh, I, I have no clue how, uh, how much longer my patience can hold. So let's just, let's start doing this. Okay, how the fuck, there we go. It's up in fuck! It's up in B, and it hardly ever fucking works. Most of the enemies you kill, you kill them with your fucking punches. Fuck, I'm dead. This thing fucking sucks. It goes in all the wrong directions. You can't hit the enemies from above, that's fucking impossible to do. Shit. How about you eliminate the fucking punch feature and just, just only make the psycho wave? Ah. <sighs> I think the punch is seriously more effective than the psycho wave. Oh shit! Perhaps the most annoying part of the game is the bomb maniac. He drops bombs and they're really hard to avoid. There's three ways to avoid them and only one of them seems to work every time. Number one, run and jump when you hear the bomb ticking. Number two, you can open a door inside of a building and stay there as the bomb detonates. You take a little bit of damage depending on your timing, and this only works on the levels with buildings. Number 3. Run in the direction the bomb maniac runs when he drops the bomb. He runs faster than you, but you can also outrun the bomb. This is the only surefire way I've found of dodging the bombs. Option number 1 is the flimsiest because of the horseshit inconsistencies in the bomb radius. Sometimes you're nowhere near the blast and it hurts you, sometimes you're near it and it doesn't. There's also another major annoyance that comes in the shape of two random women throwing food out of their fucking windows with possibly the worst sound design to come out of the NES ever. I only encountered these two bitches in the Japanese version of the game, which unfortunately we must now talk about. Keep in mind, it took Bondi an entire year to localize this version of the game, which is surprising considering what little they changed to begin with. Firstly, the Japanese version of the game has two new levels, City and Alley. The first level in the Famicom version is City, and god damn, I hate this level with a passion. I'm almost sure that it's longer than Town, which is the first level on the NES version. Other than these two levels being put in the game, the Famicom version seems legitimately harder than the NES version. 
The enemies seem far more repetitive. There's much more bomb maniacs running around, and at one point in the first level, you finish going through the women throwing food outside, and the next enemy is the fucking women throwing food outside again. So, I guess in a sense, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is mirrored through the NES and the Famicom, the same console divided by differing versions of the same game, one of which is harder than the other, that being the Famicom version. If you ask me which one I'd rather play, it'd easily be the NES version. And with that said, I believe it's time to give my final verdict on this game. I've often criticized games in the past for not making any sense at all, but until now I've never found a game that manages to make sense and not make sense at the same time. Consider the possibility that Dr. Jekyll isn't being attacked by the townspeople at all. Maybe some of them are just running from the bomb maniac and want to get away, so they push Dr. Jekyll and it hurts him. Maybe the other townspeople are just doing their jobs, and the dogs are startled by the bombs, so they go crazy and attack Dr. Jekyll. This is most likely what's happening in the game, and it all makes sense if you think about it from a logical perspective. At the same time, there's a lot of things that don't make any sense, like the fact that the bomb maniac drops bombs, and sometimes there are people and animals close, but the bomb only kills you. Or the fact that you can hit a stupid singing cunt with your cane, but everyone else is immune to being hit by the cane. You remember me saying how hard it would be to hit a bee with a cane? That doesn't make much sense either. This game pushes you to evil. As Dr. Jekyll, you can't do a goddamn thing to defend yourself, and you spend the entire game running from everything. It's almost like the game encourages you to turn into Mr. Hyde, so you can finally fight back and kill things, even though the game preaches that evil cannot overcome good. The game frustrates you and pisses you off to the point where you just want to kill yourself and play as Hyde. Either that, or tell the entire game to fuck off, because even playing as Mr. Hyde is an unsatisfactory experience. For the past couple months, I've been unconsciously searching for another game with absolutely no redeeming qualities at all. A game like Bubsy 3D, where nothing in the game can be categorized as good, even from the most objective perspective. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde meets the criteria for such a game fucking bullshit controls that I'm convinced are designed to make you angry, a storyline which is billed as being based off the original novel but is nothing more than a goddamn lie, enemies that are nonsensical, music that is capable of driving people insane, sound design that is equally terrible and should be used for torture, and finally, gameplay which is also seemingly designed to drive people away from the game. This game is literally a digital potpourri of shit and garbage encased in plastic. Dr. Jekyll and motherfucking Mr. Hyde on the NES gets the final rating of... REST IN PISS! What is this shit?